All right, we are going to jump into a really fun and important lesson for you, and I don't want the title to intimidate you, um, Singer's Vocal Anatomy 101. <laughs> Perhaps I should have made it something a little more accessible, but I want um, to explain what's happening inside of your singing voice, inside of your body, because we can't see it. And um, earlier in the course, I talked about how we really do have to be singing detectives um, and connect the dots um, to understand what's happening inside. But this knowledge that you're going to get right now with this simple anatomy will help you understand your vocal instrument so much better. It'll make it so much more clear when we, you know, talk about your head voice and your chest voice and all these different key things. And the other thing it's going to do is it's going to protect you. You'll see that in the course I also have a vocal health checklist and I want to make sure you look at that. And then this is the other um, part of that, which is understanding your anatomy so that you can treat it well. Your vocal cords or vocal folds, as you'll soon learn, are quite delicate. And it's really our job to take good care of them, both when we speak and when we sing. So if you ever experience things like having a really scratchy voice or a dry voice or feeling like you're um, overworking it, you know, do you ever feel really tired from talking or singing or, uh, you know, going to a party? Um, these, these are things that can really wear out your voice. So a key part of understanding how to protect your voice is understanding, you know, the mechanics, the anatomy. So that's my setup so that you don't go running away and click off this um, lecture. It's, it's really worth um, going through this. And to be honest with you, I hope you kind of enjoy, you know, geeking out with me. It's fascinating, honestly. I unfortunately about 20 years ago did have a minor vocal injury where I overused my vocal cords so I'm living proof that you can really wear them out and I got um, two vocal nodes on my vocal cords and what wound up happening was I had to go on vocal rest and then I had to learn all about this good stuff. So I don't want that to happen to you guys and that's why we're going to set you up for success from the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this image here. And then next to the image, I went ahead and wrote out my singer's definition of what these areas mean. So anatomy could mean a lot of different things. And when we're looking at our singing mechanics, um, they're very similar to your respiratory system because you're using breath. Um, but I'm putting everything into kind of like a singing terminology. And so, you know, I am not a voice doctor. I don't pretend to be one. <laughs> but I'm giving you <clears throat> the um, point of view of anatomy for singers from a performer and a singer. All right. So let's dive in. Literally, we're going to dive into your mouth and throat. So we're going to take my little uh, cursor here and we're going to go through your lips and we're going to go back into your mouth where we pass by your tongue and your teeth. And remember that these are all your speech articulators when you were doing your tongue twisters. That's the part of your um, you know, speaking and singing voice that you warm up so that you're able to enunciate. And then up here, um, like you know, on the roof of your mouth is your hard and soft palate. And I want you to feel it with me. You're gonna take your tongue and you're gonna put it right behind your teeth on the top of your mouth, on the roof of your mouth rather, and then you're going to drag your tongue back along the ridge until you get to the soft, fleshy part. You'll feel that there's like a bumpier skin and that it's softer. And this is your soft palate. And it actually can rise and fall. It has a few different really important jobs. Um, it can close off your nasal cavity when you're drinking water. Um, it helps you breathe, but it also helps us as singers make more room, right? So when we're opening up on big vowels, sometimes a great thing to do is to actually lift the soft palate. And the best way to uh, get that feeling is to yawn. And then you'll feel like in the back of your mouth, this whole expansion happening. And that has to do a lot with your soft palate. So now we're going <clears> to <throat> move up above your mouth into this very key area here that so many singers don't pay attention to, especially when you're starting out. 
This is a whole cavity area that's called the nasal cavity. Yes, your nose is here, but it look at how far back it goes. And if you look, it's just as large as your mouth cavity. This fills up with our sound. This is the part of our voice that we really connect with in our head voice. And it also can have quite a nasal cavity. So when singers are um, starting to get more refined in their tone and they don't necessarily want to sound too nasally, there's all kinds of fun options that you can do with your nasal cavity. But for now, what I want you to realize is that your voice is resonating in your head, both in your mouth and your nasal cavity. And there's even a few little sinuses up above there where you also resonate. Pretty cool, huh? So now we're gonna go down the back of your throat and we're gonna go into the area where your vocal folds live. So they are called vocal folds. And the question I get a lot from people is, aren't those vocal cords? It's an interchangeable word, but the vocal fold is more accurate. It has to do with these very thin layers of tissue that make up your vocal folds. And so that's more accurate than calling them a cord. I think why people call them cords is because they imagined that sound kind of hits your vocal cords like a guitar chord and kind of boing makes that vibration sound. But the, the actual sound process is a little bit different than that. So vocal folds is more accurate. So if you before we um, get a real close up of the vocal folds, I want to point out where they live. They're right here down in your throat and they're right here at the beginning of your trachea or your windpipe. And that's where you breathe, right? That's the connector um, passageway uh, where air goes down into your lungs and then comes back up. This is where we breathe, this is where we speak, this is where we sing. <clears throat> and the other big pipe that goes down our throat is our esophagus, and that's where your food and water goes. Now, if you've ever made the mistake of having water go down the wrong pipe, right, it goes into your windpipe, and it feels horrible. Our body doesn't want water down here. Getting water in your lungs is a very dangerous thing. So your vocal folds actually do a couple of important things. They, they help close up that passageway. Um, so let's take a look over here at what they're doing. So when you're swallowing, your vocal folds have the ability to come together and they're these sort of like two white bands here. So this is a bird's eye view. You're looking down your throat right now. Now, when you are producing sound, like what I'm doing right now as I'm speaking, my vocal cords are vibrating. So the air is coming up again through this windpipe and it's resonating, it's, it's vibrating <clears throat> off of my vocal folds and they open and shut really quickly. There's some really cool videos on YouTube. I highly recommend you check them out all about like vocal folds in action. Um, and you do have to be aware that it's a little like sci-fi. They're, they're full of mucus and they're kind of red and fleshy. But if you want to see a video of it, 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 it's really interesting what happens. So the air causes the vocal folds to vibrate between open and closed positions when we talk. And it's like these little puffs of sound waves come up through the vocal cords out of our mouth. It's just so cool. And then finally, when you take that nice deep breath in before you do your leaky tire, this is what your vocal folds do. They open up. And as you can see, down that pipe is your windpipe and you can even see those ridges. So that's where we're gonna go next. We're gonna go down your windpipe, down, 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 until we start getting into your lungs. And remember that your lungs are so key in how we breathe. And this is the two air sacs in your chest cavity. Your ribs cover your lungs, they're your shield, your protectors. But this is such a key part for us as singers to think about, right? Because our air is our fuel. It's what makes our, you know, our, our voice go. And without air, our vocal folds wouldn't be able to do anything. So um, the key thing underneath our vocal um, excuse me, our lungs, is our diaphragm. It's not much to look at. And to be honest, in all my years of studying, it was always this sort of like mysterious thing that people would talk about. But I'm going to give you a really simple explanation for it in just a moment. So 
in a nutshell, it's this thin skeletal muscle and it's at the base of the lungs and it divides these two cavities, right, between your chest and abdomen. <clears throat> but it plays a really key role. Excuse me, I'm getting over a little <clears throat> cold myself. I have a little extra phlegm on my vocal folds. Um, it, it, do, it, it is a really important um, muscle <clears throat> in that when we inhale, our diaphragm, that's sort of shaped like a dome, flattens, which expands our lungs with air. And then that's what actually makes, if you, you can imagine our stomach muscles are down here, a cool six pack, that's what makes our stomach muscles go out. So when we take a breath in and we inhale, our, our um, diaphragm drops. And I like to think of it like a fisherman's net or a fisherwoman's net, that it drops down the lungs fill up with air, kind of like a net of air, if you think about it that way. Our stomach muscles jut out a little bit. And then when you exhale and you breathe the air up and out of the windpipe, that diaphragm rises back up. And that causes your stomach muscles and your stomach organs to go back in. Now, working along with your diaphragm are your stomach muscles. They're not drawn here, but there's a few different groups. Your transversus abdominis, there's these different muscle groups um, that are helping coordinate with your diaphragm. And last but not least, what's not written on this graph are um, your ribs. And in between your ribs, you have these gummy muscles um, that also help in separating your lungs and bringing them back together. So in, in a sort of way of thinking of expanding and contracting in your lungs, your ribs play a little key role. So why all of this is so key and important is again, because we aren't able to look at our lungs. We aren't able to look at our vocal folds. I always get jealous of my musician friends who are piano players because as they're playing the keys to their piano, all their notes and their instrument are laid out in front of them and it's separate from them. They can get up from the piano bench and go walk away. We carry our vocal instrument with us wherever we go in our lives. And so that's why we have to be extra careful and diligent about treating it well. In fact, when you hear the term, you know, opera diva and sort of the bad, you know, association about this sort of diva singer with the scarf and the cup of tea and the, the whispering and the don't speak. I mean, sure, that's an over the top um, portrayal, but there's some truth to that because they are their living, breathing instrument, which is to me the coolest thing, um, but also means that with it comes a responsibility to take care of yourself, to understand your instrument. So I hope this gave you um, some kind of cool ideas about what's going on inside of your body when you speak and when you sing. And um, you're uh, going to get a PDF version of this. I recommend you print it out and have it in your singing folder so that you can um, look at it when you're singing and just remind yourself about what is happening inside your singer's vocal anatomy. All right, that concludes the vocal anatomy lecture. You are dismissed and we'll move on to the next part of your lesson. Thanks.